Philippines used to be covered in dense forests, an ecosystem thriving with animals, plants, and anything that would be needed to sustain us. Today, only 23% of our country is covered in forests. Yet, there are groups of people who still live and call these jungles and mountains home. In this episode, we will meet a tribe in Palawan who are fighting to keep their way of life intact while figuring out how to thrive in a modern world. It's easy to live in a bubble, oblivious to the environment around us. Just look around you though and inspiration is everywhere. Surround yourself with people who are doing the work and trying to make a change. Using their creativity to tell stories that make an impact. Let's get into it. We took a red-eye flight from Manila to Puerto Princesa to start off our journey. I've known Jasper for the better part of the year, and he joined us on some of our shoots in Ilocos Norte. He has an interesting story that I think can inspire us all. Where are we heading to now? Brooks Point. Brooks Point. So south. It's three hours, 30 minute drive from Puerto. Um, south, we've actually never been south by car. I've, I've flown south in helicopter. Um, so it'll be interesting to see what that looks like. Um, that's where the hangar is, and it'll be our jump-off point to meet the jungle school. Jasper is originally from Negros, and he used to be a pastor. He decided that he wanted creative freedom and pursued being a photographer and director. He's gone from Ukraine during the war to Africa for NGOs, documenting stories throughout his travels. As you can imagine, all that takes a toll on someone. He eventually came back to the Philippines and while here, found out about people helping children and mountain tribes in Palawan. He got inspired and that spurred him into action. He rallied people on social media and was able to raise money to put up schools in the most remote communities of the province. We are going to be visiting the very first jungle school that they built. Welcome, brother. Thank you. So I'll show you the hangar. Uh, 206 is not here. Usually it's full. So we use this for, for evacs. We have all these stuff here. And all just for rescue operations mostly. Yeah, they also do... Um, logistics. Logistics, Bringing yeah. up the gear and yeah. stuff. So like, like everyone that works here volunteers. Yeah. So they just do it because yeah. they just love to help yeah. people. As far as I can remember, we help around 14 jungled villages, okay. but there's more. And then we hear from the radio or from the phone, it's like, oh, there's someone sick in this kind of village and we'll, we'll have a, a flag. And so they'll just the do a flag or a is. smoke. Yeah, yeah, it's pretty interesting. Just sometimes you don't know where it is, right? Yeah. So you just have to kind of look for it yeah. based on that. And some of these landing pads, they're just uh, clear up. Yeah. some of the areas okay then we'll, we'll land there and take yeah location. i don't know in my mind i was expecting like a tarmac i'm like all right so <laughs> we're in the jungle yeah. now <laughs> one thing really unique about the jungle school is that we didn't really have that idea it was them who said hey our kids are walking two hours mm. you know can we build a school and they, even if just in a hut that was the whole concept and i thought maybe this is a good, good place to, to build a school. But one thing I know is definitely, probably some people on Instagram could help. So you did the crowdfunding on Instagram? Yeah. Okay. Where a few days we raised 10 grand. Two weeks we raised 20 grand to build a school. How much did you need to raise to, to set up one school? 25, 30. So that, that also includes a year of the teacher's salary. Yeah. I was talking to my friend and this this very cliche thing and then she was saying that you know, we're, we're, we're called human beings and not human doings. And, and me, for years, I was, I'm always that human doing. <laughs> you know, and, and it's rarely your human being. And, and in the jungle school is a place where I can be. Yeah. I was out drinking, looking for the next thing. I couldn't really settle. When, before the pandemic, or during the pandemic, I struggled with a, a lot of like deep depression mm -hmm. just because I was rejected for the first time in the U.S. When, as soon as I to arrived LAX. in the airport, 
they stop me and said, how can you afford to travel in 50 countries in the past three years? You don't look like you can afford it. Like literally. And then I was held and in, in passed around 15 different immigration officers. I was, I was in a room filled with, with people who speak Spanish with handcuffs. It was depressing, you know? And then they sent me back home. The Philippines? Yeah. And then I, I, during this time, COVID happened and yeah, everything yeah. was closed and I couldn't travel. That's what I did for the past few years, yeah. traveling, traveling. Now I couldn't travel, I was stuck there. And man, I tell you, I was struggling with deep depression. And so my friend, Daniel, whom I met a few years back, texted me, said, hey, I have a helicopter here, I do all these things. Why don't you come take pictures? And I said, look, I'm going to go there for a few days, you know, and, and come visit. And that few days come, came a year. So this kind of became like your, your yeah. solace, yeah. right? I found that purpose mm. because I, I was lost. And, and now I have this kids, family, you know, it, and, and, and I owe that a lot to that. You know, without him, we would have not been building schools. PAMAS is a nonprofit that helps anyone in need using air support, medical care, and education. They work tirelessly in areas around the country as volunteers to try and reach as many remote communities as possible. Daniel, Daniel came here a few years back, about seven years, seven years ago. Did a little mission trip and he fell in love with the people. He was a paramedic, he was also an aircraft mechanic, a pilot, a helicopter instructor. So all these, like he can drive bulldozers, all these stuff, yeah. Like a real builder. And so decided he saw a lot of need here in the jungles. Uh, most of it because the terrain is just so difficult to hike. People would go to the hospital and sometimes they just die along the way. You know, it's, it's, it's very, very difficult. Just to give you a little idea, one minute in the helicopter is an hour hike in the jungles. Yeah. So 20 minutes flight is 20 hours hike. Captain Daniel Louie, known as Pilot Dan in the Philippines for eight years, played a crucial role in this mission. He flew supplies up and down the mountains and was at the front line of many medical emergencies. And also, I think one of the most vital things is building schools. Almost impossible to build schools up in the jungles without the helicopter. Correct. Because besides the wood, everything needs to be airlifted. Mm -hmm. So the toilets, think about the, the roofing, all these things. It's a very, very difficult thing to do without the helicopter. And that's why when he went missing, right now he can, can build schools or yeah. deliver proper supplies to the jungles. On March 1st, 2023, during a medivac call just off the coast of Balabac, his helicopter disappeared and is yet to be found. We, we tried to find him for a good two months. You know, the Navy was involved, the Air Force was and such, involved. That's one of the deepest straits in the world as yeah, well, right? Yeah, which makes yeah. it even more complicated. Even that, that specific part is 120 meters, which is not diveable at mm -hmm. all. We even hired a a group that is good in finding wrecks. Like these are Australians, they're expert. You raise like a hundred grand for it and find anything, wow. nothing, zero. I'm sure now his presence is kind of definitely felt yeah. and, and missed here. Yeah. Yeah. Um, is there someone new coming in to start doing supply runs to yeah. try to make sure that the jungle schools or the jungle communities that you guys were previously aiding? Yeah. Because of what happened, there was this big donation run or fundraising run, and we're raising uh, money for two helicopters. We have pilots ready, but now we're just waiting for the chopper. Uh, some of the choppers here in Pamas and the south and Mindanao. So we don't have anything that the supply run right now, except for the airplanes. This first jungle school is a steep hour hike away from the airbase. Other schools are located around the same mountain range and some of them can take up to five hours by foot to reach. Some friendly locals came down to help us with our bags and off we went into the mountains. I'll show you an ancient Filipino technique for surviving in the jungle. It's called stealing from your neighbors. <laughs> you need to ask for permission from the tree first. Hey, can we have some? Tabi tabi po. Is that the one? 
No. Michael Jordan, beware! Oh no! <laughs> whoa, 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 whoa! What was it? Ants. <laughs> Easy. Put that. King of the mountain. That wasn't too bad. It was just, it was just very steep. Yeah. Non-stop. Kids walk as far as two hours. Man! Say hi. Say hi to Tito Irwin. Man. Hi. This is my boy. And Neil. They're all hiding. Look. <laughs> Look at it too. Sensei Mami. Mama. Done. Say hi. Hello. Hello. <laughs> it's Milika. Tito Cute. Irwin. <laughs> so these are the kids that go to school here. Ilang taon kana? Ilang taon kana? Tito. 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 Okay. Look at that. Okay. You see the hiding kami. behind the sheets. <laughs> Look. Look just. Wala Angelica. <laughs> si An Angelica yan. Angelica. Kau ha. The Palawans are very introverted people. So they're very shy. Now we get they get in trouble like people coming here asking for oh let's mine and all that. Did just sign. Do you know how to read and write? So if, there's, if there was no school, basically, while the parents are working out, uh -huh. the kids would just be yeah. hanging out. Yeah, get around. married at the age of 12, yeah, yeah. 14, and so the school gives another option, yeah. you know. Tell me what you want with me. The Palawan are an indigenous ethnic group of the Palawan group of islands. They were the original settlers in these areas and had vast fertile lands. They used to be more nomadic, moving from one piece of land to the next in search of the perfect areas where they could grow what they needed to live. A few groups still persist in the jungles. Agrarian settlers and farms started pushing them further into the mountains where they dealt with harsher conditions that pushed them to eventually start trading with lowlanders for sustenance. With that contact, there have been many stories of them being taken advantage of since most of them never learned to read or write. Because of that, education has never been more important to be able to uphold their lands and keep their way of life. A few years back, the community decided that a large rice field should be converted into a school, since most of the kids would have to walk hours on end to reach the closest school in the lowlands. That's how the opportunity of the jungle school came about. You, are, you, are in me. you know, they say education should be the great equalizer. So at least presenting that opportunity for people to learn things I think is, is, is amazing. So you have two classrooms, two teachers, um, and then a living quarter for the teachers as well. Ito pong schools na meron tayo, itong bayog, before siya natayo, three years na silang nag-aast na ma'am, pwede bang sige na akyatan nyo kami? Before, inakyatan po namin sila every Wednesday. Wednesday, once a week. Pero dahil sa kagustuhan nila, sila na mismo yung nag-gather ng signature na uh, mama, may, nandito na po yung mga magulang na gustong uh, makapagpaaral ng anak nila. Fun in the sun! Okay? I like to have fun! Pagtuturo po namin dito sa Jungle School ay magkaiba po doon sa baba, sa Deep Ed. So yun po ay tinatawag naming ALS alternative learning system at meron din po kaming tinatawag na harvest time at saka farming time. Yun po yun nakakatulong sa mga tao dito sa mountain na uh, ah okay lang kahit maging maghanap buhay ako at pwede pala rin akong mag-aral. Hindi katulad sa baba na pag estudyante ka, estudyante ka, hindi ka pwedeng maghanap buhay kasi kailangan mo mag-aral every day. Ang mga kinikita po namin mga estudyante dito is kahit ikaw ay may anak na o may asawa na, pwede ka pang pumasok, pwede kang mag-aral. Karamihan sa kanila ay nainggan nyo din po na yung anak ko marunong nang magbasa, sana gusto, gusto ko din. So kaya nagkakaroon po kami ng mga adult class. Kasi makita mo yung need nila na kailangan nilang matutong bumasa, sumulat. Lagi naming ipinapaalala sa mga estudyante na hindi lang kayo nag-aaral para sa sarili nyo. Nag-aaral kayo para sa community. Na makita nila na, ah, possible pala na kahit nasa bundok ako, 
possible palang maging nurse ako, maging doctor, maging pilot. Ngayon, meron kaming um, nine students na nasa baba. Sila po ay mag, si senior high. Sa school, kilala na agad sila. Kasi pag sinabi nilang galing sila sa PAMAS, ang iniisip nila ay magagaling na estudyante yan, masisipag. Nagkaroon po kami ng graduation. First time namin magkaroon ng graduation sa senior high school. Then, one of the students speak up sa harap. Nang sinabi niya na yung education ay hindi lang para sa piling tao. So, it's for everybody. One interesting thing about the Jungle School is that none of us here told them that we we're going to build this school. Mm -hmm. uh, this community was actually asking for us to build them a school for the past three years. Mm -hmm. But we don't have any budget, we don't have any of that. And so as soon as we rallied for a social media movement to build a school, it was, it was just the idea of to, be, to build a, a literacy school that is sponsored 100% by social media. Mm -hmm. I start posting this on social media, it's a bunch of kids and their stories, just start to take photographs and people responded. In the first post I remember posting, I know this is impossible, but I want to see a, one, a, a literacy school 100% funded by social media. Do you kind of like live edit when you go around? Yeah, yeah, all the time. Whenever I'm in the field, I'm the type of guy that when I put, when I store stuff on my computer and if I leave it there and the excitement is gone, it's probably going to see but in the next year so. Really? Yeah. yeah. Actually, that's a tip for all content Creators. creators out there and all videographers, photographers. Yeah. I have so many videos, like I'm not even kidding. Yeah. It's all, in, it's all in, uh, in, uh, in a hard drive. So obviously this series is brought to you by Lenovo powered by Intel and Microsoft. This whole episode would not have been possible without them. They were nice enough to kind of support this whole idea, which has been fantastic. Even before I had this project ongoing, I actually bought the Yoga 99 Pro, which turned out to be just serendipitous and worked out really well. Today we have the Lenovo Legion Slim 5i and my Lenovo Yoga Pro 9i with a 13th gen Intel Core i9 processor. So I think Jasper, it's time to flex. flex. <laughs> so I'm gonna be talking to you about the, the Lenovo Yoga line. It's ultra durable ultra portable, it's absolutely powerful in terms of the amount of charge that you get and battery that you get. So it's a perfect laptop if you're a creator on the go and someone who goes to a lot of secluded areas because your battery life can last you up to nine hours of real-time usage, which is absolutely mind-blowing, which is a dream for most creators out there. Some of my favorite things as you get consistent responsiveness up to 25 applications open on your laptop, crazy. You go from wake to sleep in under one second. You get 9.5 or more hours of real-time usage. And with just a 30-minute charge, you get up to four hours of battery. So I've been using this for a couple of weeks because it just got shipped to me and I was working on uh, Premiere Pro um, timeline, but also editing photos on Lightroom as well as adding titles and graphics on Photoshop with all those three applications open, plus my Telegram, my WhatsApp, uh, my Gmails, and a bunch of kind of search items in YouTube. And this thing was blazing fast. No lag because it's built on that Intel Evo platform, which makes everything super seamless and quick. Quick little specs for all you people who are looking for these technicalities. You get a 13th gen Intel Core i9 processor, for graphics, you get an NVIDIA GeForce RTX 460, which is crazy fast, one terabyte of SSD storage, and all of that under 1.68 kilograms, ultra light. I'm using the Lenovo Legion Slim 5i with a 13th gen Intel Core i7 processor. For graphics, we have NVIDIA GeForce RTX 470. With my nomadic lifestyle, just traveling everywhere, especially in the jungles, I, I need a laptop such as this. This processor delivers incredible performance with clock speeds up to 5.6 gigahertz and up to 49% faster multitask performance over the previous generation. Our chipset is Intel SOC platform. For storage, we have one terabyte SSD, a four in one card reader, and it weighs less than 2.4 kilograms. This laptop gives me no lag, gives me a workflow that's seamless as possible, and it gives me the opportunity to create social media content as fast as possible.
After talking to the community and hearing some inspiring stories, we asked if we could visit some of the homes within an hour distance from the school, where some of the students live. Most Palau ones live in family units. They look for the best piece of land within their territory and start working on it. When a particular family takes care of a plot of land, the community deems it theirs. The houses are elevated, made of wood, and are usually located next to streams. They try to grow what they need to eat and trade, from rice to tubers and fruits. Sana kung may tubig tayo, lagyan natin kunti ng tubig bago ilagay dito sa ulo. Para sa sakit ulo. Ah, it sticks! Malamig, di ba, sir? Ito plato na lang. Ah, this is cooling. This is cooling ito. Yeah. Kanila ginagamit noong maday pa kami, magkasakit kami, ito po yung pinukuha nila. Eh kaya alam namin, tinuro na nila, ito ang kukunin pag masakit ang ulo. It is very difficult to grow crops consistently here, so a lot is foraged in the wild. This area used to be very rich in unique endemic fruits, plants, and tubers, most of which are no longer consumed. When people think about like forests in Europe and stuff, it's usually quite nice to walk through. Um, Filipino jungles are a different beast altogether. Deep, bushy, humid, insects falling all over you. So this is deep and this is where they actually source um, the food that they eat. So yeah, nature provides, but not, not, not easy. But rice is still the preferred starch of choice as they've grown tired of root crops even though it's difficult to grow here. The men usually work the fields gathering what they can to trade from rice to wood and rubber. The women take care of the household, the children, and the crops. It's rare to see anyone not working. It's clear to see, though they can sustain themselves in the mountains, there are many issues making it harder to do so. The main one being the threat on their livelihood by land encroachment or conversion to mining sites. Nagtatanim kami ng mga kailangan namin dito para mabuhay kami. So kung nag, may nagmimina po dito sa area namin, saan po kami maghanap ng pagkain? Kasi yung nangyari sa amin, katulad ngayon, di kami nakapag-aral. So wala kaming alam. Ang, ang kumukontra namin, pareho po namin na hindi nakapag-aral. Ngayong panahon na ito, kailangan makapag-aral po ng mga maganda yung mga bata, makapagtapos. Nang sa ganun, hindi po sila matulad sa amin. Pero ako po talaga yung nag talaga sa barangay, pumunta sa barangay, nagasikaso ng kasunduan na yan. Lahat po ng requirements, ayaw ma, tapos ayaw mag, hindi pwede magtayo ng school dito sa bundok kasi may paaralan nga doon sa baba. Baka raw magmina yung mga pamas. So, sa tagal po, pitong taon bago na process yung school. Ang kutob ng tao, baka raw ginto ang tinutukoy. Hindi ginto inuukay. Ginto talaga yung tao na lahat ng tao matulungan dito. On our way down the mountain, Tatay Benito wanted to show how they harvest honey down here. Because Tatay asked for help coming down, maybe the load's too heavy, uh, so they're meeting halfway now to do that. Kaputangan? Dogchan yung atin so? Mm. Okay, let's try this. Mm. It's like bright, lemony, lots of citrus. Just one of the many treasures of the jungle that if cultivated properly, could build a new livelihood for the Palau ones. The plight of the mountain tribes of the Philippines is a complex issue and requires a very nuanced approach. On one hand, they know the land well and want to call it home for many generations to come. On the other, their survival is constantly under the threat of modernization. The further out they live, the harder it is for them to access medical care as well. 
The hope is that educated children eventually learn modern trades and can come back and contribute to their own communities. What the Jungle School is doing hopes to equip future generations with the knowledge needed to be able to still thrive in their lands, yet to be able to take the fast pace of development head on. The indigenous people of Palawan play an important part in our cultural heritage, and I can only hope that this video piques your interest and inspires you to help where you can in your local communities.